quite All laughable. Right, let's go back to your book, pages 98, 99, where you tackle the issue of NASA's claim that 2005 was the hottest in recorded history. You state that NASA had to reverse, and I think you've just repeated it a moment ago, NASA had to reverse that position on the basis of work undertaken by Toronto-based statistician Steve McIntyre. That's right, isn't it? Yes. So it's correct. Well, that's the claim of the statisticians, that NASA was wrong and NASA withdrew as a result of that. Those statisticians also showed that the frightening curve that you once showed where we're going into this period of unstoppable global warming was in fact grossly wrong. And you claim that NASA now states the four top years of high temperatures are in fact in the 1930s. That was the 1930s, there was a date in the 1920s and one in the 1940s. Okay, you mean the hottest global temperatures were in that period? No, the hottest US temperatures, not the hottest global temperatures. Yes. They occur in mid-latitude deserts. Yes, they I... don't occur in, in areas such as the US, which right. is not so, a mid-latitude desert. So in desert. fact, what NASA changed was a series of figures on data of temperature in the USA which made very little or no change to the global mean temperatures. Isn't that correct? Unfortunately, we have 30 years of satellite and balloon measurements of global temperatures, they are not in accord with the other ways we measure temperature, which is done with thermometers in areas where we've got a huge amount of heat given out by villages as small as a thousand people. And so one set of data where we use a thermometer uh, gives us a completely different story to when we use radio sonde balloons and satellites. And if we've got two separate data sets, uh, to start making claims, as we've heard from many meteorological centres, is absolutely erroneous. But your book on those pages essentially claims that in the 1930s we saw the hottest years on the world record, and that were, that's what NASA, NASA had to change. We now, saw, the, we you, saw you said, them in you the US. You actually said the correct thing here. It's in fact in the United States. It isn't in the world, is well, it? Well, uh, the first thing is that global temperature is a very difficult thing to measure. Uh, secondly, uh, we have a huge bias in the measuring stations and they are mainly in Western countries, European countries. They're not in areas where we might get very high temperatures, such in the deserts. OK, but this mistake uh, about what NASA did to its figures about global mean temperatures repeated on a huge number of blogs uh, put out by climate sceptics. Now, is that where you got your information well, on that? I, I don't know what a climate sceptic is. What, can you explain Someone to me what a climate sceptic is? Someone who's sceptical of climate change. I should, well, I'm I should not. write uh, more. I'm not. Um, I'm arguing okay. that when you look at the history of All the right. planet, uh, when you look at the history of the planet, climate is always changing. Now, uh, you're pushing these points very hard, Tony. Now, if well, I no, embrace I, I, your party line... It's not a party are line. Are you going to respect the, me in the morning the when I embrace your the, party this line? This is the NASA <laughs> line from the, from the NASA and the Hadley Institutes. Now, they're two of the main institutes for checking global temperatures. If one says that the temperature has gone down, uh, that global warming has stopped in 1998, if one says that, as you do, you've surely got to back it up. Can you explain to me, then, how a measurement of a temperature today, by ignoring all of history, which you're now doing, which is terribly dangerous, can you explain to me how measuring temperature today is going to tell us anything about the future. Well, I mean, I wondered that when I read your repeated line that what happened from 1998 to 2010 tells the picture of what's going on right now. Because Chapter it seemed 2 to me, is called History. It did seemed, you read that? It, I did, yes. But it seemed to me that in the Are end... You sure? You, yes. It seemed to me you <laughs> fall... It, no, it did. It's about all the periods of interglacial warming, etc. Uh, now, wait a minute. It's also about the cooling and it's also yeah. uh, the effect that warmth has on humans where they thrive and the cooling which depopulates humans. Now that is a history of humans. You are ignoring history and looking at today's measurements and trying to predict the future and that is erroneous. That's what this book is about. It's about saying let's look at the whole planet as it is. Let us forget um, what's happening today. Let's intertwine that with everything. Let's look at what space is doing and let's look back in the past. You, unfortunately, are trying to um, ignore all of history, and you do that at your peril. Well, I think what I'm doing is actually quoting what you repeatedly state Out of context, in your because book. Chapter 2 is on history, yes. um, Chapter 3 is on the Earth, I do. Chapter I think, 4 I think, is on I ice, before, Chapter uh, 5 that's on water. Yes, that's true, and I think I said we don't have time to talk about every one of those chapters, but on one of the key things that you talk about repeatedly in your book. 
that the earth has been cooling since 1998. Now, the key thing I talk about in the book is the earth is dynamic. It's always changing. And my argument with the climatologists, and climatology is really just modern geology in action, my argument is they're forgetting time and they're cherry-picking small amounts of information. This book is a comprehensive view of the way the planet works, written for the average person who feels helpless and disenfranchised by the sort of bullying that they get from scientists and various media networks who have got a bias, who are pushing their story. And as I ask you again, if I follow the party line, are you going to respect me in the morning? Well, I respected you enough to bring you on the show to talk <laughs> about what you're saying, and we certainly all took that view when we asked you to come here. So I suppose the answer to that would have to be yes. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Tony.